So my name is Nathan Scott. I work for Red Hat for the last couple of years. Um, I have a, a keen interest in performance analysis, and particularly in what uh, we call system level performance analysis, but I'll talk about different kinds of performance analysis in a minute. Um, I work with the performance tools group at Red Hat. Uh, we look after tools like PCP, which I'll be talking about today, um, and other tools like Valgrind and System Tap and a few other tools of that ilk. Um, so a lot of people don't know much about PCP. It's kind of a, I might like to think of it as a hidden gem of the open source landscape. It's been around for many, many years, over 20 years we've had PCP. Um, and over 11, 11 or 12 years or so, it's been an open source project. It started out as a proprietary system from SGI. Um, so in my talk today, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about um, PCP itself, because um, a lot of people need an introduction to it, what it's for, how it's put together, um, and some of the basics so that I can then go into talking about containers and what that means for PCP uh, and how we've, we're attempting to marry the two concepts because um, they don't particularly fit well together with traditional system level tools like PCP. Um, also in this talk I want to talk about kernel instrumentation for containers. Um, and the, the metrics that are available to you if you have an interest in performance analysis and you're using containers. Um, so I'll talk about the concepts in the kernel that back containers um, and um, how they fit together and what that means from a performance analysis point of view. Um, so, uh, so Right up the top level, let's talk about what PCP actually is. Uh, PCP is a, a toolkit for performance analysis. Uh, it follows the Unix design philosophy of having many small tools that do things working together rather than a single big thing that does everything. Um, like I mentioned before, it's for system level performance analysis. So these are tools of the ilk um, of Ganglia, uh, Collecti, that kind of tool. Uh, and less of tools like profiling tools, um, like OProfile or Perf, things like that. It's sort of a, a different category of tool. Um, so we're in the system level analysis game. Uh, in PCP, uh, we, we have focus on being able to do both live analysis of a system while it's running and while it's failing, being able to anal analyze what's happening. Um, and also be able to use the same tools that we do, that we use for live analysis, but also for doing historical analysis. So being able to compare what's happening right now on, on a system to what was happening yesterday or two weeks ago. Uh, and PCP is inherently extensible in, in several different di directions. Uh, and it, we have this, these core concepts of monitors and collectors in PCP. And I'll, I'll describe what those two, what that division is. Um, but it's extensible in both those ways. Um, so I'll talk about that on the next slide. Uh, but last point I want to talk about in terms of PCP overview is that it's a fundamentally distributed system. So baked into PCP is the ability to analyze multiple systems, multiple computers at once that are forming a, a larger complex system. So if you have a, a web application, for example, that has a database server, some storage, the application, perhaps a firewall in front, those are all forming a complex system together and they all need to be, they need to be analyzed together. It, it's difficult if you have to analyze different systems separately to try to get a good overall idea of the overall performance of the system. Um, so a little picture is just trying to show that we, we have the ability to focus on what's happening right now under that sort of little light pyramid. We can look backwards in time um, and we also try to aid um, future analysis work like capacity planning, things like that. We don't really do that directly in PCP, but we have the ability to store, the da store data so that you can project forward using other tools. Uh, so this is the, the sort of architecture diagram for the, the live mode of PCP. What if you install PCP and it's running on your system, these are some of the fundamental processes or co components that go into a typical deployment of PCP. Uh, so on the, the left hand side, the green side, we have what we would call the collector system. Um, that involves a central daemon which pretty much runs the show, it acts as a, a multiplexer, so that's the PMCD daemon, performance metrics collection daemon. 
um, and the client tools or monitoring tools that want to report performance data uh, will typically connect to that daemon and, and ask for the data that they're interested in and then report that. So there's a very clear separation in PCP between the components that extract data from whatever domain that they're, they're interested in and the tools that are going to report it or record it or um, take some action based on that data. Uh, so it's fundamentally, the, the collector architecture is fundamentally pluggable. You can, uh, like in the diagram here, we have uh, application plugins that might know about performance data for an application, uh, like response times, how many things are happening per second within the application, how many requests are happening per second. Uh, you might have an instrumented mail queue, you might have a database that's instrumented, always the kernel is highly instrumented. All of this data is available on any collector system and you can plug in new, new pieces of your own. So if you have metrics in your own domain that you're interested in, you can also make those available through PCP for the monitoring tools. Uh, and there's many, many monitoring tools. So here on the blue side, we have just a, a few examples of some of the, the commonly used ones. Uh, but there are many, many different tools that form part of PCP. So uh, the PM logger process is the one that is used to record performance data. So it can record any performance data. Um, and that is then available for replay in the other client tools using the same sort of interfaces as the live mode. Uh, there's a, a tool for displaying strip charts. The PM chart tool lets you um, plot graphs of your choosing for arbitrary metrics. Uh, there's a tool called PMIE that lets you uh, make decisions. I can feed it uh, a bunch of rules about performance and it will analyze those rules, evaluate them on some interval that you ask it to, and then take actions based on uh, those evaluations. Um, so this is kind of the high level concepts of PCP. Um, later on in the talk, we, we want to look into how we can make this kind of architecture work in the container world. Um, you can probably see fairly quickly that these system level tools don't necessarily fit so well into the container world uh, because they're designed for a single system and that, or a single machine exporting data about that one machine. Whereas with, a con with containers, we might have many containers, all of which are pretending to be smaller, um, very lightweight versions of machines. And they all have their own metrics as well that we want to export through this system. Um, so I'll, I'll be coming back to that later, how we've started to tackle that. Um, so the last slide in terms of introducing PCP concepts, um, the, one of the core concepts of PCP is this idea of a performance metric, which is basically anything that you can measure on your system. Um, so anything that you can measure, we need to represent it in some way. Uh, in PCP, there's for every metric that you might make available, there's a, um, a series of pieces of metadata that need to go along with that performance metric that define what it is for the, for the monitoring tools to be able to interpret it. Um, so every metric is represented in the performance metric namespace. Um, so in my example here, I've got an example command uh, PM info, which is just another one of the client or reporting tools. Um, it's looking at a particular metric here, which is the number of read operations across all devices. So that metric has the name dis.dev.read. Um, so that metric name is metadata that's associated with the metric. Um, and in this example, I'm just asking for the metric descriptor, which is the information about the metrics and the values. That's what the fetch does. And the minus TT asks for the uh, various forms of help text that might be associated with that metric. Um, so we can see all of the metadata that's associated with this particular metric here, and that gives us a, a good example to uh, see the kinds of things that must be associated with every metric. So we need to know its data type. So this particular metric is exported from the kernel as a 32-bit unsigned integer. Um, I'll come back to the indom concept in a minute. But the semantics of dist.dev.read are that it's a, a monotonically increasing counter. Um, there's several different types of metrics that are exportable. Um, so we have counters that always increase. So we have um, what we call in PCP instantaneous metrics. Uh, they're called gauges in some other systems, but they're metrics whose values may change in arbitrary directions every time you sample them. And they would be things like the number of users that are logged into the system, things like that. Um, we also have the units. Um, for this particular metrics, the units are just that it's a count. 
Um, other metrics you might have units that are things like uh, it might be measured in kilobytes or it might be measured in milliseconds, nanoseconds. That's more metadata that needs to be associated with every metric so that the client tools can correctly interpret and report uh, um, that particular metric. Um, you can optionally associate help text with every metric and with all the kernel metrics we go to great lengths to provide help text to explain what every metric the kernel is export the kernel exports is uh, as best we can um, and if you're writing um, new, new components that are plugging in metrics you get to add um, the help text that's relevant for your component that you're adding uh, and finally we have of course values that are associated with every metric so a metric might be a singleton value like that example I gave before the number of users that are logged in that's just a, a single number for any one system uh, but you could also have a set of values, like with this example, which is the read operations across all devices, where well, the set of values is um, going to be expanded across all the devices in the system. Um, so in my example here, I have um, two devices, the SDA and SDB devices, and separate values associated with each of those. But they share all the other metadata, so we don't need to repeat that metadata for every instance. Uh, so that's a, a high-level overview of PCP for anyone who hasn't come across it before. Those are the, the core concepts. Uh, PCP is a, a huge project. Um, it's been running for many years. We're talking hundreds of thousands of lines of code. So that's just a very brief overview of things. Um, I want to take a segue now and talk about containers for a while. Um, so even if you're not really interested in PCP, hopefully you can get something out of this section of the talk where I talk about um, the instrumentation that's available that the kernel maintains for the concepts that sit behind containers. Uh, so the kernel doesn't actually know anything about con containers, as you may know. Um, it has other concepts which containers are, are built upon. So containers is a user space concept, not a kernel concept. Uh, so in the kernel we have, was that five minutes, John? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, okay, so we have uh, C groups and namespaces in the kernel, um, and those are the two concepts that um, all of containers are built on. So, uh, C groups are a way of uh, associating groups of processes and controlling them together. Um, there's a set of uh, statistics associated with each C group that is created within the kernel, and things like Docker uh, will create C groups for each container. Um, associated with each C group are all these metrics that are available to, to you to analyze what's happening um, within that particular container. Um, and there's several different subsystems. So there's a, a block IO um, C group, there's a CPU accounting C group, there's a memory C group, and there's one or two or three other C groups as well. But these are the core ones that have statistics available at a, a a controller level, which a C group level, which ultimately becomes a, a container level. Um, and these are some of the sorts of things that we can see at a, a, C, a C group level. So for each of those things, you get IOPS and uh, throughput per device, um, IOs that have been issued from within a C group, which is ultimately from a container. Um, and service and wait time, uh, they can be aggregate or per device. So you can see for each device that is um, IO is submitted to or from within a container, uh, you can see which devices it's written to. Uh, those are exported by the kernel um, in a way that's relatively um, user unfriendly. So they have device major and minor numbers. So user space tools then get to decode that and try and present that in a useful way. So that's one of the things we, we do in PCP. Because um, I'm running out of time, I'll skip through. Um, so I'll skip through some of those metrics. Um, if you're interested in those things, the place to look for them is um, at the C group mount points. Um, usually these days that is slash sys fs c group and then the name of the container. And the naming of the, uh, the name of the C group, sorry, is dependent on the system you're using. So if you use Docker, it will name its C groups a certain way. If you use other systems, they get named differently. Um, and that's one of the problems which we have to deal with in PCP as we try to map uh, containers to the kernel concept below them. Uh, the other concept the kernel has is this idea of namespaces, uh, which if you know anything about containers, you'll have come across this. And they influence 
the behavior of the, the processes that are running within a container. For example, if you're, inside, if you're in a shell inside a container and you cat procnet dev, which is where the network device statistics come from, like the IO traffic for each network device, that looks different on the inside of a container to, um, from the host that's running the container as it does to other containers. Um, so as you can see, these are all problems that are going to have to be dealt with, with in tools like PCP that are these system level tools. Um, um, so I'll skip through that. I've talked about that. And namespaces are inherited across fork and client, um, and processes within a container share a common view using this namespace concept. Uh, so I'll talk now, the uh, last couple of slides, last slide or two, about the work that we've been doing. Oops, that went back. No? Oh, so I've just used the same example again. Um, so some of the goals that we wanted to use in uh, to um, tackle in PCP was to allow the tools to start targeting individual containers. So typically, historically, you've been looking at a, a full system. Now we want to be able to focus in on individual containers. Um, so in my example before, I did a PM info requesting values um, for all of the network, or for all of the disk devices, the network devices, disk devices in the system, we want to be able to say, well, not for the whole system, but just for what's happening within that container, a named container, tell me the traffic that's been generated from that container rather than from the entire system. Um, so we've added, um, actually I'll talk about what we've added in the next line, but effectively we want to be able to say, PM info, fetch values just for a container named crank and the network values, and that should come up with the network interfaces from that container rather than all of the interfaces on the system. Uh, another uh, important goal that we wanted to uh, tackle was to not have to require people to install PCP and have the PMCD daemon running inside every container. Um, that's kind of the, the obvious solution to this because then PMCD has the correct namespaces when it's running. Um, but that requires a lot more software installation and software maintenance within inside the, every individual con container that you might want to manage. So we want to be able to have either a PMCD running on the host on which the containers are running or a privileged container um, which can run PMCD and is able to switch into and out of the namespaces of the other containers. Um, uh, I talked a little bit about the device major minor thing. So there's one of our little side goals is to just make it easier to do analysis of con containers and solve little problems like that for you. So you get the names like SDA, SDB rather than device major minor. Um, and be able to do the final goal, data reduction is one of the or like a key goals. So we're trying to look at just individually named containers rather than all of the containers on the system all at once. Um, and that affects things like the the process set. So if you're running a tool like TOP, um, if you run it on the base system, you're going to see all of the processes. If you just want to see the processes that are running in a container, um, we can use PCP now to do that kind of thing. So just restrict it to the set of processes that are running in a container and which ones within that container are generating CPU load or whatever load you're, you're interested in. Last one. Um, so I'll probably have to skip over most of this slide, but you can probably get the gist of where we were going from the last slide. Um, the critical concept that we've been introducing recently is this ability to switch namespaces um, and provide information about containers of interest uh, throughout the infrastructure that is PCP. Um, so that starts from the client tools like PM Info here. Um, you might be connecting to a particular host and you're saying, on that host, I'm interested in container named Crank and I'm interested in the network metrics. So there were a series of wire protocol extensions to allow the, 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 the cont uh, a container identifier to be passed over to the remote system and then PMCD on that remote system is then able to say, ah, you're interested in this container and looks on its systems, and figures out what C groups or what other things that maps to, which namespaces are associated with that container uh, and can allow the collector system to switch in and out of those that namespace as it needs to so that it reports the correct network devices for that container. Um, excuse me. 
Um, so a quick look at the status that we're up to. The next PCP we'll release will include this code in, and this will be in within the next couple of weeks. Um, this is the, the first release that will have any of these concepts in it. Um, there's a lot of work still going on within PCP to just improve this and make it slicker as we go forward. Um, and I expect as we go down the track we'll be wanting to write uh, new monitor tools that are specific to containers um, so they know um, about C groups in particular and are able to, like tools like VMstat, IOStat and TOP and other tools like that today, we'll be building tools that are container specific and say um, report the activity within the containers. So I didn't really get much time to talk about the details of those kernel metrics that are available for C groups but they're actually uh, not the same as the, the metrics that are available for the, the raw host. So you can't just run VMstat on a container and expect it to report something useful about that container. There's, there's whole new tools that will need to be written. Um, and that's just small links about PCP and then I'm done. Cool. Sorry for going over time. <laughs> uh, we have time for exactly one question. <laughs> Make it a good one. No problem, thank you.